If you are just starting out and you're getting a water fed pole system, I highly, 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 highly recommend that you get a new van so we don't have our logos on it yet so uh, I'm gonna go over uh, one solution it was a accident really that uh, I think might save you money if you're in the same situation where you don't have logos on your van our other van has logos on it um, but we haven't gotten van logos on this one mostly because we're I'm thinking about changing the design of the, the logos that go on the van uh, so I haven't completed that process yet so what I do want to show you is I do have this. Now this is not a magnet, this is a vinyl sticker. This vinyl sticker, uh, which is I think 18 by 24, cost me $15. A magnet with this exact same logo and same design uh, would cost you twice as much as that. So if you're in the boat to where you're thinking about getting some magnets, maybe instead of getting a magnet, you get one of these vinyl, and it's actually a floor sticker. And if I wanted to, I could just take this right off. It's not gonna damage, I don't know if you can see that. It's not gonna damage the vehicle at all if I keep pulling that. And, um, and then I could just put it back on. So if I were to take it off completely, chances are it might get a little wrinkly and all that jazz, it wouldn't look good. Um, but if I were gonna, so if I were gonna take it off completely, it probably isn't gonna be reusable um, versus a magnet. So if you need something that you can take off and on, then probably a magnet's the way to go. But if you're going to go cost effective, this might be a better solution. Uh, it's a vinyl sticker, full color, $15. I'll put a link in my description to where you can pick these up and you can get them all different sizes. Again, I did not get this for this purpose. I got this for a different purpose in the back of the van that I'll show you. Um, but it didn't work out so I basically ended up with this and didn't know where to put it so I put it there kind of on a whim and it has so far withstood the heat the rain uh, and the drive and, and uh, no issues um, I also have some magnets on my vehicle uh, that I just kind of randomly put that kind of started out as a joke believe it or not um, but what I found was that if I did put the magnets on the on the vehicle I would have people come up and just grab them uh, while I was working so, you know, like if I was working storefronts or whatever so they didn't want to bother me they saw the magnet they would grab it so it kind of works out um, so as you can see the windows are tinted I talked about that earlier it's great you can't see in there gives us a little bit of privacy but also cools the van down I do have uh, my rims blacked out and I have uh, my handles and my hinges all blacked out I did that uh, just with Plasti Dip black plasti dip and again um, this is in preparation for a couple of the different designs that we're gonna put on the van I don't have my other van here right now so I can't show you what it looks like I'll post a picture real quick so you can see uh, that's what the other van looks like but we're thinking about changing it all up so we've blacked out a lot on this van kind of back up a little bit to give you another look here up here we have a load right ladder holder and I love this thing I'm not gonna do it now but I just pull this out push this down right here pull it out and then the whole thing comes down and I can get the ladder off and on easily with little effort so we'll open up and the first thing I want to show you whenever I open up is the lights sure if you can see that but I do have uh, LED lights running across the back here so I'm gonna go through these items quickly if there's anything that you want me to elaborate on just drop a comment and I'll either make another video or I will explain in the comments why we set something up that particular way okay so first we do have this jug here now normally this jug is not here uh, this jug it holds six gallons of pure water the reason why I have that is because this jug will fill up Hank the tank right over there um, so I'll pull that whole tank system out and here's another link uh, in the that shows you how we use Hank Hank is probably my most favorite piece of equipment 
because it, it allows us to be so efficient. Um, so I'll pull Hank out and uh, Hank by itself, just the frame and everything, weighs uh, 15 pounds. But whenever I fill him up, he'll hold nine gallons, so that's another 75 pounds. So what I do is I just pull him out, 15 pounds, set him on the ground, and then I'll grab the jug here, fill him up, then I'll go off, clean windows, come back. He's pretty empty or close to empty. He's a lot less you know, weight, and then I'll put him back. So I have a whole other video that shows Hank in, in use. If you are just starting out and you're getting a water-fed pole system, I highly, 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 highly recommend that you get uh, Hank or at least some version of Hank in your repertoire of tools. So going back, here we have this um, and it's just bungee corded in. Here we have a funnel. We use this to fill up our uh, gas tanks um, for our leaf blowers. Here I have a water holder, water bottle holder. This is for when we get on rooftops. We just take this D-ring and attach it to our harness system. Here we have some napkins, um, you know, like whenever we come back and we gotta wipe our hands off or anything like that. So got this frame from a Home Depot or something. Pretty sure I got this off of Amazon. Here we have the switch to our electric reel, which is just a Cox reel down there and I will put together a video on how I wired it. You can see the wire goes around there, comes all the way down, basically goes to that box right there, which is the battery system. So, coming down, we have a hook right here that I put in. This hook holds this hose right here. Okay, and then if I stretch this hose out, we have some magnets there on the door. I stretch this hose out. You can see the hose comes all the way out the door. The reason why I have that hose is because it is a second bypass from the pump, which is here. And uh, so basically, before I get to it, there's a tank right there, holds water, pure water. It feeds into the pump. The pump then pushes the water out, either this valve or this valve or even sometimes both at the same time. So right now this valve is closed, okay? But if I were to open this valve and turn on the pump, then water would come out of this hose, pure water. And you may ask yourself, Rob, why do you need that? Well, if I'm using Hank, which I knew I was gonna keep using Hank, then I need to be able to fill Hank up. So imagine if I didn't have this jug here full, Okay, then all I gotta do is turn on the pump and pure water will come out of this and then I could just fill up Hank right here and then turn off the pump and then off I go with Hank and just put the hose back. So that's why we have the hose there. Okay, here I have uh, just a little doggy um, bowl so that whenever, sometimes I bring my dog along he'll, uh, he'll have something to drink out of. Down here, I think this is trash. Yeah, that's just trash. So here we have a toolbox. Inside the toolbox, you know, just common tools, a lot of things that we need uh, on a daily basis. Here we have our, our Cox reel. Um, love the reel. Uh, however, if you're just starting out, I do not recommend you get in a reel system. I do not recommend you get in a tank system if you're just starting out. This is not near as efficient as I'd hoped it would be. It's a great reel and it's electric and uh, and all that, but uh, I'm gonna make a more in-depth video on why I do not recommend getting a tank system with a reel. And uh, I'm not picking on the electric part of it, even if I had a hand crank, which I would hate. But uh, even if I had one of those, I still would not recommend you go this route. To me, it's just kind of wasted money. This reel cost about a thousand dollars because you gotta get the reel, and then you gotta get the solenoid, you gotta get a couple of other parts to make it actually work. So altogether, this electric reel cost about a thousand dollars and then on top of that you got to buy the hose and this is a uh, three-eighths hose and I did put one of these stoppers on it so eventually what we're gonna do is put a hole right here in the van in the bottom of the van so that this will go through the bottom of the van 
go underneath this pass here and then come out the bottom of the van and then off to wherever we want. The reason why we're going to do that is so that we can close these doors completely and still use the system. But for now, we don't have the hole, um, mostly because I'm not convinced that I'm going to keep using this. So here is battery and I got the battery from Walmart. It cost me about a hundred bucks. It's a marine battery, deep charge battery. It is wired to my van, so I don't have to keep recharging it. Uh, it recharges every time I start the van. In order for that to happen, you have to get a relay switch, which I think was about 20 bucks. The battery itself is inside here, and it's being protected by this box. It is wired. You can see those wires right there. It is wired, but it's not that complicated, guys, and uh, I'll put a video together on how to wire this. Here I have a pump and a connector system uh, that just, this one connects to the reel here, okay? Actually, it connects right there, so it kind of goes around, you can see that, so it goes around, and then behind the battery and then comes up and connects right there. This hose connects to the tank right there. Okay, so basically it goes from the tank. Okay, I, I fill the tank right there at home through my zero system. It fills up with water can see this is a 65 gallon tank so right there's 50 gallons fills up with water and then the water comes out once the once the pump is on the water comes out right there comes up that pipe goes up through there and then comes straight over to this side and either goes to the green hose here or to the clear hose here the clear hose goes to the reel and then I hook up my water fed pole to the reel and I'm done or if I turn this knob off turn this one on then the water just goes from the tank through the green hose and then comes out here to fill up whatever I need it to fill up the pump is controlled by this flow meter here you can see this is a DA components flow meter and all I do is hit on right there and it comes on off it's got a couple of more bells and whistles uh, the flow rate most for just about everything I have to do um, is 20 it goes up to 99 the only time I really crank it above 20 is if I'm using this green hose to fill up Hank over there then I might I might crank it up to 80 or even 90 in that case so a big shout out to DA Components. Uh, you can buy this flow meter pump and it comes on this backer board here with pre-drilled holes, uh, completely wired. You can get that from DA Components and I believe, I'll put a link, but I believe it's about $300 plus shipping to the US. If you're in the US, I'm gonna sit down back here. So I can show you this. So that whole component there, now minus the uh, the white plastic connectors and all that, you have to get yourself. But that whole system there is about 300 bucks, and that's more than enough to get you started on a tank system. The flow controllers in the U.S run about five or six hundred. That pump right there you can get in the US for about 125. So the fact that you can get this entire setup pre-wired from DA components for about 300 bucks uh, is a godsend. So here we have our solenoid. You need that solenoid uh, to wire to your switch is what this is comes down and that's for your reel I just hit that button and it reels the hose back in 
okay? And you also need that to uh, get wired right into your fuse, a 15 amp fuse, which is what that is. And then that gets wired right into your battery, which is what that is. Moving to the tank system. So as you can see, we have our logo. This logo is uh, the floor sticker that I was telling you about that's on the outside of the van. So originally I bought one for this. Basically I just wanted a giant sticker so that anytime my customers look in the van, they're gonna see this, my actual logo. Just makes this look a little more professional, I think. And the way that I have this mounted is that I have these, I got these eye hooks. Let's see if you can see these. I got these eye hooks from uh, Lowe's. I think they were maybe $2 each. And I have a bolt here, big old washer here. The holes go right through the van. And then on the other, other underside of the van, I have steel plates, just little four by four steel plates uh, with holes drilled in them that are holding it up. And then I just basically screwed them in. So that gave me the eye hook. And then I just use these straps, you know, that you can pick up from Lowe's. You can get, uh, I think, two of them for $30. And the thing I like about these straps is that they don't have any loose ends, you know, flapping around. Um, so you can get straps for less than that. But uh, so I got these uh, four holes, one here, one on that side, and then obviously two on the other side holding this down. So this 65-gallon tank filled is going to be about 500 pounds. So you figure 500 plus a couple hundred for the driver, you're at 700. Remember, you only have about 1,800 pounds total. So you got to take all that into consideration. I think this uh, reel by itself weighs 50 pounds, and then you add another 50 or so for all the other stuff. You know, it adds up quickly. Now, this is a 65-gallon uh, tank. So if you look here, I don't know if you can tell, but it looks like my water's black. Um, if the sticker wasn't here, you'd be able to really see, but let me put it over there. You can kind of see how the water looks black. Well, the reason for that is because I have ballast inside the tank, and that's to stop the water from sloshing around. Especially if this was like a 100-gallon tank, you want some sort of ballast. So I saw from another YouTuber that they used um, drain pipe. You know, it's that plastic corrugated pipe that has the holes in it, and just cut it into pieces. And then, and then just drop it in here and that stops the water from sloshing around. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I'll put the in there. So yeah, you can kind of see it in there. So I have several of those pieces and that stops the water from sloshing around, which is gonna help you um, whenever you're trying to break, especially if you're breaking suddenly, that you don't have 500 pounds of water come crushing to the front and pushing your van or, or wearing on your brakes, okay? So, Moving on behind, I have a couple of racks. I have this rack system here, okay, that allows me to screw things directly into it, which I'm currently not using. Then I have this rack system that I um, really like, which is the Rubbermaid Fast Track. You can get for about a hundred bucks, and it come. You can get these hooks, and these hooks, you know, I can move, take off, and all that stuff. So holds my extension cords because we do have a, a couple of electric um, leaf blowers for gutters. We also have a gas. Uh, blower, but it's not in here at the moment. Um, but uh, I love these uh, si the system here. Super easy to install. <clears throat> Took me maybe uh, 10 minutes to put this one in. You know, 10 minutes to put that one in. Basically, let me see. I can show you on this one over here because I put it in different places. If I slide this down, it's basically a screw and a washer, and then it goes through. Uh, something and, and then you know a nut on the other side and that's all there is to it and then this plastic piece just goes right on top of it and then you can get all these different types of hooks you know that can slide or stay in place kind of thing okay so back to this side so over here we do have the electric uh, leaf blower that we use we have a couple of them this one I like it's pretty powerful by works I think it was like 35 bucks and then I think each of those electric cords are a hundred feet um, we also have a gas power. Oh, by the way, this was uh, this tank system. This tank by itself was like 200 bucks. Picked up at my local tractor supply, um, and uh, I'll put a link for that in there. Next, we have Hank. So Hank is a tank system. 
Um, it's basically what all this stuff is, condensed and portable. Uh, so I have um, a flow meter, not sure if you can see it, but I have a flow meter there, voltage meter, and uh, this connects to the water fed pole the same way the other hose does and it's just a great great system I have a whole nother video on this so just watch that so I'm not going to go over this too much but we love Hank so originally uh, the sticker that was on the outside of the van I was going to put on this but it was just too big so I'm going to I'm ordering another sticker for Hank uh, to go on the front so that whenever we pull him out people can see that um, and that's where that will go so moving on I went ahead and opened the back door so we can have a little more light in here we have our roofing system over there. I'll go in more in depth on that whenever I walk around. We have our my belt hangs there. Water fed pole is in a pipe. Um, the way that I mounted this, and there's probably lots of better ways, but this was pretty easy and simple. I got the pipe, I cut it down to the right size, and then I got these heavy duty zip ties and I already had these holes in the top of my van. See, there's one there, and there's one there. I was fortunate that these holes were this distance apart. So basically, I just ran the zip tie from this hole to this hole, pulled it out, and then just zipped it through and put the pipe right in here, which worked out great. Because <clears throat> I have one here, I have one here in the middle, and then I have one at the end. Now, the problem was that even though it was being held up, the pipe would still slide back and forth. I fixed that by drilling a hole here and a hole here and then just running another zip tie to attach to this one. Now the pipe doesn't move this way or this way or up or down and it's just sitting there and it works out great. I don't think I have anything on the back yet. I don't have anything on the back um, and I don't really need anything on the back, but you could put something on the back there too. If you Across this shelf here, you know, we've got our, our magnets, business card magnets. We use one restore. Uh, it sits in here in this rack nicely, but I did bungee it in because I just didn't want it to fall anywhere. Um, so I just wrapped the handle up, you know, bungeed it to a couple of holes that I had. I put in this rack system here so that I could have stuff hanging off. Um, so on this side, I have my measuring wheel have my measuring wheel you know and it just comes off if I want to take it off and then over here I have my uh, gutter tool and then also have my chain for my bucket if I'm on a ladder um, do have uh, some spray away here we use this for mirrors don't use it a whole lot but uh, there was like a buy one get one free or something so we bought a couple of a couple of the cans up here we have uh, all of our extra applicators so there's applicators in there uh, we have our uh, Mormon um, along the track. We have an extra water-fed pole brush. This is the bore, bores here. And then again, out of sight, out of, mat, out of mind. So I like to put those door hangers right there so the employees know whenever they're done with a job, they can just grab a couple of door hangers and then off they go. Um, so then down here, we have several drawers. Okay, and these drawers are locked just by that little switch and then there's one over here. So we don't use them a whole lot, but inside this drawer, if I pull that out, there's uh, bungee cords and extra zip ties. We don't use that a whole lot while we're out and about. The top drawer holds some of our smaller squeegees and also all of our rubbers. Okay, and then we can lock that. And then here on the top, we have extra drawers. We have a little bag, bags for trash, and uh, extra drawers. Over here, I'm going to take this off so that you can see in here. Uh, yeah, I unlocked it already. So we have extra tubing. This would be in case we're out and about and something on the water tank breaks and we really need it. So we have that there, extra drawer. And then down here we have a couple of bottles, squeezy bottles if we're doing some inside work. We have a water hose for gutters. And then we have trash bags again for, you know, gutter cleanup. And then we lock that. Down below, 
we have another pipe which I was originally going to hang on the roof next to this one but I put this down here by accident one day and I liked it and I'll show you why in a little bit so we'll put this back and then we're going to walk around to the back I'm going to give you a quick overview Now over here, next to the reel, I do have this handy dandy, and you know, we can pull out some drawers here. And uh, I think we have 12 drawers and then a little underneath. So underneath, so we do have these gloves. I got these from uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, I don't remember, but they were 15 bucks. We use these for gutters, and uh, they're not disposable, and these are great, especially for going on hot roofs. And then we also have, I like the nitrile coated gloves. So we have a ton of these um, for employees. These are like 10 bucks for 10 of them. And then this isn't really a great place for it, but this is just the charger for Hank in case for whatever reason we get out and about and we need to plug him in. And then that is just trash. So put those there. Going into our drawers. The first drawer we have some sponges. Second drawer we have razor blades, new ones. This holds all of either our, our old ones. Um, so when we take them out, we stick them in this um, so they don't cut anything. Safety goggles. This is a tip for um, cleaning out gutters. We just hook up to a water hose if we need to. And we have some more nitro gloves back there. Uh, latex gloves. So whenever we're doing uh, acid wash we'll use those and then sunscreen got to use that on this side this side is more like tools so here we've got a bunch of wiring stuff in case something breaks down here we have tape electrical tape plumbing tape regular tape here we have these uh, little rings in case in case in case the uh, water fed breaks, we have different connectors in case something breaks on the tank. And we're out and about. Here we have a flashlight, some WD-40. Uh, some of the most common tools that we'll use. And for these, if it's not in here, then it's going to be either in here or it'll be one other place I'll show you in a minute. And then uh, we use these to get screens out, so we'll have enough of those. Okay, so let's move to the back. All right, so now we're at the back of the van. As you open the door, you know, we've got magnets. So if somebody comes up and they want a card, we can just grab one. Over here, so we have that pipe on the ground and it became pretty handy for to hold our poles. Uh, so the blue ones are for window cleaning and then these wooden ones are for gutter cleaning. And then we have a, a broom here that slides right in there. Next to that is we have our common tools. So, you know, our um, our blade that we would use, this one needs to be changed out, would we put right in there. And then our uh, sunscreen, and then some of the most common tools that we'll use will be right there in the back. As we move up, we have our Webster heads, you know, for uh, spiders and stuff we have our four inch blades and then this is just a hook that holds the piping from the water fed pole you know it comes down and I just usually hook it right there it's usually a little neater than that uh, and then the end of it I just kind of let it and then the end of it I just kind of let it hang right in here um, that because every now and then you know some stuff will drip out so that's the side there. If for some reason we needed to get, if for some reason I needed to get something on this rack, I can just pull this and the whole thing slides. So, you know, if I had some things right here hanging and I needed to get those, well, with this in place, it'd be way over there. I can't reach it. So I like that I can just pull this. It'll come right to me. 
Again, we have our uh, door hangers. And then moving on, I'm gonna kind of show you what, how we do our setup here. So we have two buckets. This bucket is mainly not for applicators. We just haven't moved them yet. But this is for clean towels only. These applicators need to be over here where the rest of them are but we just haven't done that yet. So this is for clean towels. And then over here we have a, a container that holds our five gallon bucket and that would have our solution in it. And then this just holds the squeegees and the applicator that we're gonna use for the day. And also it would have, you know, our Dawn in there and uh, a cup for our bucket on a belt and then our GG4. And then what we do is we take our old towels, you know, the ones that we use, you know, at the end of the day, and we just throw them in here. So this would be dirty towels, this would be clean towels, and this would be our water. Make sure that if you do a system like this, that you do whenever you're driving, you put this on there. Last thing you want is to slam on brakes and then all the water go out and get all over everything. Uh, I like this because it's just easy to grab. And there's usually only two of us, so there's usually two squeegees and two applicators in here. This just doesn't have the applicator on it yet. Um, and then we would grab these. Here we have uh, yard signs. Just don't have a better place to put them, you know, without bending them or anything. So we put them there. And again, out of sight, out of mind. So I try to put them in the forefront so employees will remember to grab them. Here we have another pipe. And inside that pipe, you know, we could put anything, but we put a bat there. That's in case we want to put a baseball you know, while we're out and about. Then we have two hooks up here, one, two, and this, uh, these hooks hold our belts. And we just hang there when we're done. So typically there's gonna be two belts hanging here, okay? And uh, our belts we keep pretty simple. We just have a BOAB and a couple of extra holders and that's all we need. Over here we have the Ridge Pro and we have our retractable Guardian Fall system. And we have our, this one's my harness, and I have it all, uh, have it all locked up, running through, um, and then here's the lock for it. So, you know, if for some reason I did leave the back doors open and somebody saw, oh, wow, that's a $100 harness or, you know, that's a $500 Ridge Pro, I could just grab it and walk out. Well, they wouldn't be able to because it's all locked. Um, it's all locked together, and then it's all locked around this track that is screwed into the van so it's not going anywhere. Um, if you are going to have uh, expensive equipment like this, especially toward the back of the van like we have ours, then make sure you find some, some way to lock it. You know, we have this locked through here and they just can't get to it. Now, whenever we bring in our gas-powered leaf blower, then a lot of times we'll just take this whole bucket out and put it right here. One thing about these buckets, so I do have a bungee cord right here that goes across, okay, that stops the buckets from sliding this way. And then I have another one that's like this on the other side, you can't see it, but it stops the containers from sliding backwards. Just wanted everything to be presentable and neat. I didn't want anything to slide around uh, and I wanted everything to have its place. So there's still a little bit of work that we have to do to be able to add some other things that we want to put in here. Um, we're thinking about putting a shelf right here so that we can slide uh, step ladders underneath because right now we would only be able to just put our step ladder, you know, kind of in the middle there, which is fine, but it uh, just doesn't look very tidy to me. So um, up here we have our uh, business cards. We have our business cards. Our ink pens, you know, branding, branding, branding. You guys should be constantly thinking about branding, how you can brand your business.